Okay, welcome everybody to the, what is it, Tuesday, April 11, 3 p.m. Uh, Board of Trustees Property Subcommittee meeting. And today we have a guest from Schoolhouse Construction Services. Thank you, Richard. How are you? Good. Um, Richard, obviously, you must have seen my name tag. Related to Bill? Are you related to Bill? Yes, Bill's my cousin. Okay. Uh, so you well. cross paths with Bill. Yeah. yeah. In um, many ways. You're past these two. Your name again, sir? Craig. Craig. Okay. So that's my uh, school card and that's my business card when I was uh, a general contractor, construction manager, which I've closed down the construction business and kind of work freelance now as a consultant. Why construction so easy these days? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't need those, I don't need those headaches anymore, Craig. Okay, so I um, invited you here today to uh, meet you, have you introduce yourself and your, your company in regards to uh, coming on board as our OPM. Are we all settled with the contract? It's in the city's hands right now. There's been some technical glitch glitches um craig is aware um i've been keeping them up to date as um, i spoke with the city um procurement officer and he's working with it to get it we're, okay so worst just, case we'll do a hard copy but mm -hmm. at this point we'll we'll just wait for a just uh housekeeping type mm -hmm. items okay um so why don't you uh take the floor for now thank you uh, my name is Craig Wilbur. Uh, Schoolhouse Construction is the company that I work for. We are a primarily an owner's project management firm for schools, uh, New York State, Mass, New Hampshire, and Connecticut. Um, I've been working in public procurement on some level in construction for the last 10 years. Um, I have 25 years of experience in design and construction oversight. Um, I have a lot of experience in greenhouses cultural work with masks going cannabis crazy so there's been a lot of work in that sector so I'm um, very familiar with greenhouses uh, and I'm very familiar with the local market uh, I come from Dalton so I'm only 35 miles up the road and uh, so I know a lot of stuff I know the contractors I know the architects <coughs> in the area so we hope to engage folks by word of mouth first before they go out the door and then uh, by RFQ RFP as we go forward mm -hmm. um, Will this group be the approving body of the project? We're, go ahead, Andy. So, so my goal, we have a board meeting tonight, board of trustees meeting tonight, and uh, I'm going to present to the board that they uh, authorize the creation of an official building committee. Uh, that would sort of substitute this property subcommittee, and, and that building committee would comprise of most of the individuals that you see sitting here, uh, along with probably some other industry experts, uh, which is pretty typical, I think, of most building committees. Uh, so that building committee would, would be the one that would be meeting periodically. Uh, obviously, you'd be invited to be part of that team. Uh, at the end of the day, any official votes around contracts or whatnot have to go to front of the board. Uh, but I think you started to talk a little bit. There is a, a policy where we are able to get contracts through the, not through the board, but by the board without having to wait for the next official meeting. So if there's things that are timely that we need to have passed, we can do that between the official board meetings. But there'll be, hopefully, as of tonight, an official building committee created, um, and it would be that committee that you'll be working with. Uh, I think that committee would be authorized to give direction, give some vision of what we need and what we want, but any official votes have to go. Okay. And are there any dates that are blocked out right now for board meetings through the summer? So typically, the board meets on the third Tuesday is the typical model. Uh, we have it set tonight. We have one for May, one for June. Uh, we typically try to take one of the two months off over the summer, whether it's July or August. But again, if, if we're eyeball deep in a, in a building project, I'm sure we'll be meeting. So, uh, There'll be some milestones that we'll talk about. And, and this is not the building committee, so I'm not sure I would board this group with everybody. I think who you're seeing here, honestly, who you see sitting in this room, for the most part, will probably be on the building committee. They don't know that yet, but they're going to be volunteers. They are, just by showing up. <laughs> by default. By default. 
Well, then maybe I could just kick this off and, and talk a little bit about uh, the next steps for the building committee. Uh, so the building committee is going to be responsible for overseeing and approving much of what I'll be doing and helping you with for the designer procurement part of this, uh, which is key. Um, and it comes with some time constraints here. Um, basically, what I'm looking at is we would have the RFQ out on the street for an architect um, and ready for tours of the site by the end of May um, in order to start designing by August 1st. And to be honest, the August 1st date, um, depending on the procurement process, with town, it, it, could, it could slide a little bit further into, uh, into September possibly. But this is the goals over the next um, few months to get you a designer on board um, and then start talking about the time frames and so forth. Um, there'll be some decisions you'll, the, the committee will have to make about um, the RFQ, what it's going to look like, the substance. I'll, I'll bring that up in, in email form for folks to see and to be able to speak to. Um, but these dates are very aggressive um, and it requires everyone to be on board. Uh, if there's a slight change, this will move, um, but you're not losing anything if it's September versus August you're losing a month, but if your programming allows you to, just, to go later into the year 2025, then I think the schedule works. If, if you need to be in sooner than that, then we need to take a, a, a different approach. But right now, we're looking at having the contractor awarded by August 1st, um, and based on what I read from Pete's report, Pete's at least wanted seven months uh, of, of designing and then two and a half months of bidding. So if you follow that schedule, um, you're 2026. So we will have to sharpen up these schedules. Uh, not gonna happen. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's smart that at this point in time with the way construction prices are and, and the material. No. We have a program to get back on track also. No, no. So I'll be the one that will have to start typing up the schedule, but this is the first look at it, what I see. Um, and again, it's all based on whether we can get it to the board in time before it goes out the door. And if we miss a month or, or whatever, I'm not sure where that brings you, but I'm going to put together a much more detailed um, like this I'm sorry it's small but um, it'll be a Gantt chart and it'll show you everything from start to finish and what has to be done before something else is done in a predecessor and it will start to basically flush out all of these things we're talking about so in the next 30 days you'll have a draft schedule to review question um, sharpen it a little bit etc but um, those will be the first things we need to start working on is looking at the schedule and looking at more appropriate which students need to have by 2025. One of the other decisions that will have to be made in Massachusetts, you have two flavors of construction project um, procurement, for, and it really depends on a, a vary of variables, different factors, but um, this is something we'll talk about at the next building committee meeting, it's the first discussion. So. MGL 149 is the Mass General Law that um, oversees design and construction in Massachusetts. Um, 149 is basically your design bid build, your traditional um, bidding process. It uses a lump sum contract usually. It's closed book, which means you don't get to see what's behind the scenes. You just see a lump sum number and that's it. Um, it's a multi-step bid process and that's important to talk about if you're trying to move things along. Um, in Massachusetts, there are 18 filed sub-bids, which are basically all your subcontractors. They have to be bid separately um, and bid before the general contractor is hired. It's, it's a backwards process. <laughs> Welcome to Massachusetts. 149A allows you to do some different things, um, and I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but with the lump sum, you have a higher change order risk because you're basically putting it out to bid, there's the paper, there's no discussion, there's no negotiation, it's, it is what it is. 
MGL 149A is construction manager at risk. So for those who know what that is, basically um, the contractor takes on the risk of a guaranteed price based on a completed set of documents. Um, and that price is based on an open book process. So you get to see everything behind the scenes. You get to see labor, material, markup, all the good things. And you get to see that all the way through the process. Um, it shortens your overall project timeline in this case because adding the multi-step process, bidding process, you add about three months to the bidding. So this is a discussion we'll have to have in further detail uh, before we go forward. Um, it needs AG approval um, before you can do it. It has to be five million or more, which you, will, you, you make that, that work. Um, but it does add a percentage to the overall co cost to the project. Uh, three to five percent <coughs> possible, could be a little bit higher. Um, but what it does do is it allows you to look at early packages. So material right now, generators, switch gear especially, months and months and months out. Um, so being able to buy these packages early through the contract, this would allow you to do that. Therefore, not maybe extending your 12-month con you know, construction to meet up with the demands of the material. Um, there was, I just did buy the generator 72 weeks. Um, no questions, not even a discussion, 72 weeks. And they wanted the money up front. So um, that's not all over the place, but it's, you see switch gear, you have an 800 amp switch gear in this project. And that has 61 weeks right now. So you're splitting them, they're doing two fours in order to get them faster. So we'll be talking about those things. But without that, you're not able to do that. You have to wait until the bid documents are done. So if you say August 1st, you get design documents. You have six months. You're not talking about construction until probably May of 2024 to start. And then you have all these lead time issues. So I think MGL 149 is probably going to be the way to go, and it will be up to Debbie Anderson in the AG's office to say yes, and for the building committee and the board to decide. But that, that's the first step in this process uh, as we hire the designer. This would be the next thing we have to put into place. And so basically, if you look at the two different schedules, um, if you do a 149, which is design, bid, build, you're not going to finish until probably September of 2024. That's finished construction. Then you've got to commission, move in, and get students back to back in there. So you're, that's a winter 2025. So three months earlier, you're you're into the summer, and you have a little more wiggle room, and you have some time to get ready for students to go back in September. So those are the decisions that are going to probably drive what procurement process you take. Have I bored you enough with the mass <laughs> construction law? <laughs> so there is an outside possibility of having the, the instructors and the students in the completed building by, you're saying, September of 25? <clears throat> if, we, if, yeah, if you were able to do see them at risk, we're able to get a, uh, an architect on board by August. They were able to commit to a five to six month design schedule. Um, it's feasible. Um, but it's, it's right there on teetering on the, on the point. That it's, it's, it won't take much to change that. So making those decisions, getting designer on board early, getting one who can meet the schedule, and that's going to what you're going to have to do. The RFQ is going to have to be schedule-driven on some level. So certain companies will be able to meet the, the need, others may not. Um, so that may take out some smaller contractors or, or I mean, architects that may not be able to do that. But I, I don't think you can wait seven months for a set of CDs, construction documents, and be static and wait for that. So uh, that's what I'll be doing over the next few weeks is putting together some more information so you can make those decisions. Um, but I thought I would show it to you today knowing that this is possibly gonna come up. Melanie has a question. Hi, I just wanted to clarify because we heard 
um, something on the back you were describing two procurement processes? Yes. And you said the first one, 149, was the closed bid. That was going to be um, the longer because it had the multiple bids. Mm -hmm. And the 149 allowed for the early purchases and things like that. 149A, fresh. Yep. You, then you said you thought 149 would be the quicker route. You meant 149A, I correct? Did. Okay. Thank That's you what we just wanted to clarify yes. back here. Thank you. And there's about eight other numbers after that. I just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions on? Yeah, is it the legalities of the process that are putting us to August 1st? Because it seems like, can we get there sooner at that point? And again, that would probably variables. Will the town procurement be able to look at it and help support the, the, the approval of the RFQ? I'll put it together, I'll send it to them, but they may or may not want to change or make edits to it, and then the board would do it. So I'm taking into account some multi-level approvals. If yeah. they go away, then the schedule shrinks a little okay. bit. I put a 45-day window in for the designers because it's a busy time of year. I don't want to lose someone because 30 days isn't long enough. But if we have to stay 30 days, okay. that would then shorten that a little bit more. So we might be able to push it to July where we can get a contractor on board. I mean, a contractor, sorry, an architect. Okay. So that is the next one, and there will be an agenda specific to that that I'll put together and help. Up, so I would think the sooner that we can get something to send to the city and obviously explain to them, they, they know the urgency of the project. Um, just give them a heads up and tell them that we high priority. If they have a format, for instance, uh, that they want to use, um, that would be better to get now, and then I could work with the general, and I'll provide one, and then we can back into it. What's keeping you awake at night in this point? Cost. Cost. That's what you said. Yeah, I think it was right. It is. It's going to be something that people we'll watch. Um, no. oh. number reasonable. Okay. We'll, we'll right. The, the challenge we have right now, our available revenue is just north of six million. The estimate that these provided us is 7.4 million potentially. Uh, so as Rick is saying, you know, how do we potentially close that gap? That's why I wanted to skip over. And then, you know, the question came up, I think it was at a full, full board meeting. Legally, like, where do we, at what point can we officially start the project if we don't have all the, all the dollars in the bank to pay for such a project? And I think that's going to be the decision that right, the experience you may have to, to sort of guide us. I think a decision level. At what point do we make a decision to say how are we going to close that gap? What does that look like? Versus we just have to scale back and do it further. I don't know how we're going to scale back the project anymore that we've already scaled it back, but if that was such a decision, how does that all play out? That's why I'm losing sleep over. Uh, I hate to break ground and start a project and all of a sudden halfway through you say, oh, we ran out of money. Uh, and then what do we do? I saw the, the cost estimate. It, it seemed reasonable, but again, um, that's now fast forward nine months. Um, so we'll we'll do a reconciliation of the budgets as we go forward too. So it's not just a cost estimator, an architect, or a contractor. So uh, any holes that might be there, we'll start looking at. Um, did Did you give? A specific number to work with as far as the cost as a cost value, or did you let them just go? No, we, we kept sharing what we had. Okay. So that might be tight on their end. Is something I can I'll, I can talk to them about. Um, okay. um, I think the next meeting I'll have um, some tasks that we'll have to talk about, such as hiring uh, hazardous material testing. We haven't done that yet, so we can start to get that up put together um, material testing and all of those things that you want to still have to go out to pay for but they're smaller dollars for the start of the pieces to the clock. Then he has the cost over the clock.
Okay, that's or, step one. Yeah, any questions or comments, Tim, from your perspective? If we can open up the campus as much as we can to the architects when they're on board, that will be <coughs> So giving as much information, so that's why I was saying getting hazardous material and all those things in advance. So what we give them is a complete package and they're not assuming certain costs. And I'm sure there's a, some, a lot of assumptions in the contract or in the, the construction estimate. But the good news is that some things are, are, are leveling off. Windows are getting better now, overhead doors were a year out. Um, there's about three fire stations I see driving down that are in construction that can't do anything because they don't have the overhead doors yet. Um, so there are some very strange uh, shortages that we'll, we'll deal with. But I'm very happy to be here and I hope that um, I can make it easier for you. I need to give you all the fun uh, logistic and legal information up front, but this is what we have to basically fight upstream. Right. Thank you. Really Thank you for coming and joining us, and uh, we'll be in touch. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Anything else while I'm here? No. I think that's like Are there days and times that oh. work better for you for potential building committee meetings? You know, obviously, Wednesday keep the day is probably the worst day. Yeah. That's probably we'll most day. likely keep it Tuesday, 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 Tuesday yeah. at three o'clock. I think, and I'll probably talk to, to, to you later about where you might want me to set and I'll try to give you a couple days a week early on to get this settled so you don't feel like I'm just off wandering around doing it. I'll try to spend some time here and get some feel for the campus and for faculty and all that. So um, you show me a space and, and tell me I could, I'll give you Tuesdays and Thursdays right now and I'll come to whatever meeting. I mean, if it's a Wednesday, it just has to be a different time. If it's well, at night, gonna, it's probably not a big deal. I would like to keep things on Tuesdays because I have other commitments too, so, so I'd blank out right. Tuesday. Um, and I anticipate in my head um, and have this conversation with Superintendent Andy earlier that the early beginning when things are really starting to happen, I anticipate maybe meeting every two weeks and then probably tailing off unless we can do a lot of things via email or remotely somehow. But those are the things we'll need to figure out. And I'll put some milestones in the calendar that will show what decisions or who has to make the decision, what date it's on so that we can work with it. If we see some conflicts, we can adjust, but Tuesdays are fine. I can give you any time on a Tuesday. All right, great. great. Well, nice to meet everyone. Thank you. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Bill did a lot of work. Ron Barr has done a lot of work with them. Is he still with Barr Barr? No, he, he, uh, he stepped away. After yeah. Steve left? Or? Was the answer so uh, before Steve left. Yeah. So, I can see that. I can see that. Okay. Um, all right. Let's get into our other business. Thanks, Craig. Um, all right, so <clears throat> item number one was the OPM. Uh, Tim, ductwork cleaning buildings A and B. Where uh, you got a quote of what around seventy five? No, that was the original estimate. We got a quote of both. I think it's forty forty five in that area. Okay, uh, so can. that's a, a real a realistic real, uh, yep. hard number? Yep. And is that something uh, you indicated hasn't been done in quite some time? I don't think it's ever been done in a building and B building. So I'm going to see if we can turn this around, maybe get them in here for next week. I don't know if that's possible for them, probably not. But if not, um, see how we can get them in here before, I think there's a time in June. I guess. 
because the end of June is when we have the money's gone, so there'll be time at the end of the school year. So you have money in place yep. to do this, and you're hoping you could get them in next week during vacation, right. but not likely. Not likely. I can't imagine they would right. turn that around. And who, this is uh, American? No, that was the est that was my original estimate. I, I can't remember the name of the company out of camp. Um, so are they in the process of being uh, contracted with? Um, yeah, we just got set up a contract with them. I mean, they were, they were the only bidder, so we're gonna we'll go with them. They had some good references of good school districts they worked with. Okay. So. All right. Uh, VA property, electric and water to site. Any? I haven't been pushing Mike on that. I've been pushing him on the jobs here. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna get that back on the radar at some point. Uh, I've been meaning to reach out to Donna at DPW in regards to the drainage at Locust Street in their past year. Um, I haven't done that yet either. Do you know anything? Um, just that they had marked out some some elevations on our light pole. I don't, I'm not sure when they're going to start. Okay, I'll try to I'll follow up on that. Um, safety concern at the front of the Apple storage. Um, yeah, I went down and talked to the guy. They're here. They're putting up a, a support wall back. I told them to just to put something up, a better barrier. A better barrier there. Somebody not paying attention, walk into that. Thank you. Uh, you're working on the epoxy floor today, I heard? Yep. Last coat tomorrow. And we can walk some people through on Friday for some stuff we need to have answers for for next week. And that should be ready to wrap up during uh, break and get the kids in there when they come back? Yep, I have a company set to come in and move the lockers for us down there. Um, so I, I don't see any problem having the kids in there. If I can get plumbing to have their, do their final work and get an inspection, the building inspector can sign off on the building next week, I hope. So. <clears throat> well, today's Tuesday, you only got the rest of this week for plumbing, right? Only in the very early mornings, too. So. Even more limited. Okay. Yeah, I went. To, I talked with Armin this morning, uh, this afternoon, about getting him in there. There's not much left to do. Yeah, he seemed okay when we met this morning. Yeah. Okay. And pig barn demos scheduled for next week. Yep. We'll have uh, propane taken out Thursday. Um, plumbing kids took out the two loading heaters we had just recently purchased in the last couple of years to salvage them. Uh, electric taken out. Uh, before then, the water department's going to shut the water off Thursday. So, everything's set for that. There's not too much in that barn we're going to salvage. So. Okay, and then uh, are you meeting with Wiles Architects potentially tomorrow? Yep. He's already done some work, so he's got some questions. That and he's on. okay with his $30,000 budget? He is. Okay. No, actually, 24. Even better. Even better. Okay. All right. Um, any punch list items on the uh, last window project? Uh, there was a few rooms that they had didn't do the interior caulking, but they went through and um, did that. So we're all set. They still have to give us the warranty for the windows, and then we can make that last payment. So you're you're satisfied with the work? They'll yep. come back on that uh, yep. sealant work. Um, when I met with Andy earlier today, mentioned maybe there potentially some touch-up paint at some interior areas. Yeah, that's us. So you can just see on that window there where we took so out the tracks. Yeah. So that that wouldn't be in their contract. No, that's that us. So yep. We'll take care of. Okay. Great. New energy efficient windows. Uh, air conditioning, C building. Um, Contract awarded to BG? Yep. So they're just gathering material. Okay. When's that going to? Um, as, as soon as the kids get out of here, they can start. So, end of June. End of June. Yep. 
and you're still working uh, wrapping up the details for the sidewalk project. Yeah, uh, Mike said he'd be here. He promised he'd be here this week. We could walk around and make the final decisions on such and such issues. So. The entry door uh, project, the FOB system. I yeah, uh, understand some concern with the the push plates on the ADA doors, how to, that's all going to integrate. Yeah, I'm not sure. We, we meet with those people. We walk through May 2nd with the um, entryway of lock people. So we'll, we can talk about that then. We'll Josh is kind of your IT heading. He's the one that he's the one that's spearheading it. Yes. He's spearheading. He, right. He's 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 managing the project in a sense. That is correct. Correct. on the uh, maybe a question for you crystal on the fiscal year 24 capital improvement projects we hope to get funded for it was just funded last week and it is in my board report okay great so we got the the two hoods correct and the interface system to for the AC that that's correct all right and then um, the Smith Farm Fields. Um, does that move forward, Mr. Kaling, at all? I didn't talk to Barbara Hobson, have you? No, I haven't. <coughs> uh, can you remind me tomorrow to call Barbara Hobson? Set up a meeting. I'll take care. Thank you. And should we get the mayor involved at that meeting also? Well, let me see what Barbara says. She may want her there. Yeah, okay. So let's get that back on the radar. Yeah. You're going to. I'll You're going to call her? Yep. All right. Um, that's all I got, people. And anybody got anything else? Uh, I'd like to just mention something uh, while we were sitting here. <coughs> uh, Andy and Crystal, just FYI, there's a an arm of the Commonwealth Massachusetts called, uh, I believe it's Western Mass Development. And it's a financial arm for money. And Julie Cowan uh, is a lo local woman. It's um, mass development. Mass development. Mass okay. development. Okay. Yeah, so I, um, I was going to ask you and Andy if you thought I could reach out to her and have her maybe uh, have her Western Mass rep if she can't do it. Uh, just come in and talk to us about a proposal of uh, what they do for funding. I know it's commercial funding, I know it's uh, public building funding, uh, but I also know they have money. Uh, I, I didn't know FYI if we're trying to I know close totally. this gap yeah, I do too. But so I could just, you know. You want to reach out to her? Yeah, I will. And, uh, but I want to run up the flagpole with everybody here before dinner. I would think it'd be worthwhile to at least make the phone call. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I know that they are doing projects all the time and it's in the millions and they don't flinch. But uh, as far as, like I said, the city with 20% of their people and the funding and yada yada, we know all that. So if we could build a program that would work financially to help close the gap, I'd just like to bring it to the table. Yeah. Okay? Okay. My only, uh, I'll, I'll say this more for Tim and, and Giles. Uh, and so as we mentioned earlier, the idea of a, a building committee being formed as of tonight. Uh, you walk into most school buildings, you know, there's a plaque right inside the school that says, you know, the building committee, and they list everybody. Uh, <coughs> the thought process behind that is that way the Board of Trustees would have an official building committee to oversee this particular project. Um, so this meeting basically becomes a building committee meeting. But then the rest of this agenda, you know, I was talking to Rick earlier today, uh, I think just to make all of our times more efficient, um, 
the purpose behind a pro the purpose behind a subcommittee, a board subcommittee, is for a subcommittee of the board to meet and discuss and come up with recommendations that then go back to the full board for a vote. Yeah, most of the, besides the, the horticulture building, most of the items that we just went through don't necessarily have to go back up to the full board for a full vote. But there are more updates for <coughs> you know, to sort of be on top of things as sort of the property manager of the board of trustees. So my recommendation uh, to Rick uh, was to, this meeting becomes the building committee once it's truly authorized. And then these updates aren't necessarily a formal property subcommittee meeting. They're more of sitting around the conference room table uh, in a White House and, uh, and just asking for updates. So that might be more of whatever time and days work, you know, reaching out to you, Tim and Crystal. We just met a couple weeks ago and had a similar meeting. Uh, so I think we can have those topics unofficially in the, in the conference room, and then these meetings are really, truly the, the building committee, and we're only talking about the building of the horticulture building. Uh, so. You know, I, I sort of alluded to you, Mark and James, you'd be on a building committee if, if at all possible. Uh, obviously, I'd love to have you guys on it, obviously. Um, and then, I know Rick was talk, talking about some, some of the industry experts. Uh, you know, can we have somebody from the mechanical piece, the electrical piece, the construction or, or architect, to have those voices at the table of helping us with some of those decisions? That's typically a building committee. Uh, so I just want to share that. I know, Rick and I were just talking one on one about local contractors and stuff. We'd like to have you give us some names as well. I mean, as far as electrical, uh, plumbing, uh, HVAC, mm -hmm. and in that way, there we want to. We don't want to just bring people and drop them in. We want people that you work with may have commonality and have done over the years. And I don't want to offend anybody by yep. bringing in some means of what the hell is he doing? Here? So just that why. So, my thought, as long as you brought that up, Mr. K. Lane and Dr. Lincoln Rooker, uh, is uh, Jim Moran from MJ Moran Mechanical Contractors. Did a lot of work in the area, still active in the business. Uh, he has expertise in HVAC, plumbing, and, and uh, you know, HVAC and plumbing. Um, I think he would be a good person. Um, I scratched my head over electrical. Mr. K. Lang suggested Jeff Marney from Marney Electric. Uh, he went through the program. Jim Moran did not go through the Smith Vocational Program. And then we got a couple architects um, potentially to reach out to as another set of design professional eyes. And with, it seems like a lot of people, but I think it's a lot of people would, that would be good stakeholders for the project, especially people here today that are going to be the end users, and it would be good to get some outside eyes involved. So think about what Mr. K. Lane asked. We were Bill and Jeff. Jeff. you want to reach out, to, just talk to like the construction trade department heads, see if they have anybody on advisory. I mean, these contractors that we're alluding to that would be sitting on the building committee, they obviously would be ineligible to be the contractor during the work. Right. Um, so they have to understand that. But I'm not sure if they would have any recommendations. They already have a connection to the school. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Tim, did you get a business card from? I didn't. I already got his contacts. You got his yeah. info? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Second. Thank you.